Nancy saved a dollar in the first week, then two dollars, then three dollars, and so on for 52 weeks. And we need to figure out the total amount that she saved. So one plus two plus three plus four, all the way up to 52. There are two good ways to solve this. So the first is to kind of imagine laying out these 52 numbers. We wouldn't actually write them down because that would take too long, but we could write down the first three and the last three. So we'd be looking at one plus two plus three plus dot, 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 plus 50 plus 51 plus 52. And then the trick is to kind of pair them up from the outsides going in because then we'd keep getting the same sum for each pair of numbers, right? 1 plus 52, 2 plus 51, 3 plus 50. And you can imagine that that same process can work all the way into the center and you just end up with, I guess it would be 26 pairs, each with a sum of 53. So when it's all said and done, the sum of all of these 52 numbers would be 26 times 53. The other good way to get there is to uh, think about the definition of the word average. So average is defined as the ratio of the sum to the number of terms. We know the number of terms, there are 52 of them, and we know the average, or we could figure it out, right? The average of an arithmetic sequence, also known as an evenly spaced set, is just going to be the average of the extremes. Now this works because an evenly spaced set is symmetric, so all of the deviations from the center of the set will cancel out, and therefore the overall average of the entire set is going to be the same as just the average of the first and last terms. So again, that's true for any arithmetic sequence or evenly spaced set. So in this case, the average of the entire set would be the average of 1 and 52, so 1 plus 52 over 2, and the number of terms is 52. So we could reduce the factor of two from the denominator with a factor of two from the 52. So we just end up with 53 times 26, which is the same product as with the other method. And we shouldn't have to multiply 53 times 26 on the GMAT. It just seems a little bit more computational than we should have to do on this test. And indeed, if you just think about the units digits, the product would have to end with an eight because three times six is 18. So of course, there's only one answer choice that ends with an eight, and I'm pretty sure that's by design. They wanted to give an advantage to people who can think outside of the box and uh, find shortcuts. So we're not actually going to multiply 53 times 26, we're just going to realize that the units digit of the product would be eight, and pick the only answer choice that has that. So the correct answer choice is C. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.